After producing several aircraft with plenty of potential but little international appeal, Sweden's Saab Aerospace and Defense Company finally hit the jackpot with the JAS-39 Gripen E, or Griffin. A multi-role combat aircraft with a delta wing and canard configuration with fly-by-wire flight controls. The Swedish could have simply bought foreign aircraft, but decided to develop their own fleet catering to their needs, especially during rising tensions with the Soviet Union and the persistent threat of an invasion. The Gripen was influenced by several aircraft of the era, and its first iteration finally flew in 1988, delivering incredible potential. So much so, that several variants are still being built to this day. The latest version of the Saab Gripen is comparable to the Russian Mikoyan MiG-29 and the American General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon, and has already caught the attention of an impressive array of countries. It is a highly competitive marketplace, but the sky's the limit for the company's most successful aircraft to date. Swedish Engineering Swedish Aeroplane Company Limited, or Saab, was founded in 1937 in Trollhattan, Sweden, with the objective of producing quality military aircraft for the Swedish Armed Forces. The idea came after the United States failed to deliver an order of Seversky P-35s before 1938. As the company began to develop an array of unique Swedish fighters, World War II broke out. Given Sweden's strict stance on neutrality, none of the aircraft went beyond the production line. However, company engineers kept the footprints of some of their designs and worked on them after the war ended in 1945. Just months after the Third Reich surrendered, Saab came up with the Saab 21, a one-of-a-kind twin-boom fighter that featured a pusher configuration. Following the aircraft's launch, the eager Swedish engineers kept working on other innovative designs until they came up with the Saab 29 Turnen fighter. The Turnen was heavily inspired by the groundbreaking German ME262, the world's first jet-powered aircraft to be produced with a swept-wing design, and it was introduced in 1951 at the height of tensions with the Soviet Union and the chaos of the Korean War. By the time the Turnin was retired, over 25 years of service, over 670 were produced. Saab's next model was the Saab 332 Lansen, a transonic multi-role fighter. Although it lacked the fearsome and agile look of its predecessor, it packed a punch and went on to serve with the Swedish for over 40 years. In the 1960s, right in the middle of the U-2 spy plane frictions between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, Saab introduced the 35 Draken, the first delta-wing supersonic aircraft used in Western Europe. A decade later, the small Swedish company blew another record with the Saab 37 Vigen, the most advanced fighter jet up to 1971. It had tremendous short takeoff and landing capabilities, and a never-before-seen maneuverability thanks to a large canard featured in the front. Despite the relative success and outstanding build quality of Saab's arsenal, they were all produced in small quantities and failed to attract the global market. Fortunately for the company, the JAS-39 Gripen was about to arrive and hopefully change the tide. An Amalgam of Ideas During the last years of the 1970s, the Swedish Air Force sought to replace its 35 Drakens and 37 Vigens with an affordable Mach 2 aircraft with outstanding capabilities for a defensive role to be prepared for a foreign invasion, such as the threat posed by the Soviet Union. According to Swedish analysts, the defensive plan included launching the new aircraft from 800-meter-long and 17-meter-wide rudimentary runways of the Baz-90 system. The aircraft had to be smaller than the 37 Vigen, but with better range and bomb load capabilities. While the Swedish Air Force could easily acquire foreign aircraft such as the F-16 Fighting Falcon, F-A-18 Hornet, or F-20 Tiger Shark for such a purpose, they settled for a local design. Despite being a small country, Sweden had demonstrated that it could keep a sophisticated aerospace industry to develop a jet fighter tailored for its own needs. Thus, in 1980, the Swedish Material Administration, or FMV, issued a requirement to Swedish manufacturers for the Air Force's next-generation combat aircraft. The model was dubbed JAS, which stood for Jagd, Attack, and Spawning. In other words, it called for a multi-role fighter aircraft that could fulfill the roles of an air-to-air, air-to-surface, and reconnaissance platform. The design had to be cheaper than the Vegan, but easier to maneuver to guarantee an effective combat sortie rate. Long range was not a Tier 1 requirement, as the intention was to have a defensive fighter to protect Sweden. Additional characteristics included short takeoff and landing qualities, fly-by-wire concepts, and tracking equipment. In 1982, a consortium was formed between Saab, Volvo, FFV Aerotech, and Ericsson. And in the spring, a contract was awarded to produce five different prototypes. 
Work on the prototypes began in 1984, and the first one was completed in 1986. It was baptized as the JAS-39A Gripen, or Griffin. As the Gripen was created during the same time period as the Grumman F-14 Tomcat, the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle, the General Dynamics F-16 Fatting Falcon, the Sukhoi Su-27, and the Mikoyan MiG-29, it drew inspiration from them all. The Swedish engineers could apply lessons learned from these practical aircraft and use them for their own. The first Gripen took to the skies on December 9, 1988, with pilot Stig Holström at the controls and flew for over an hour with only minor problems. Although it had its shortcomings, the Gripen had the potential to achieve greatness, and Saab got back to work immediately to improve it even further. Designing the Gripen The Gripen's airframe measures 14.10 meters and has a width of 8.4 meters, with a height of 4.5. Fully loaded, the Gripen can weigh up to 14,000 kilograms, with enough room for eight different hardpoints for ordnance. In addition, its airframe features extensive use of carbon composite materials to reduce weight to the maximum while maintaining quality and reducing its radar signature. The Gripen is powered by a Volvo RM12 turbofan engine, but newer models such as the 39E and F variants could adopt the General Electric F414 turbofan engine to provide an additional 20% thrust. The RM12 afterburning turbofan engine is capable of 18,100 pounds of thrust, which translates to a top speed of 2,205 kilometers per hour. Meanwhile, its range is estimated at 3,200 kilometers, with an approximate ceiling of about 15,000 meters. When it comes to armament, the Gripen can be equipped with a wide array of weapons, ranging from AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles to BK-90 cluster bombs, and with RB-71 Skyflash AAMs, AGM-65 Maverick ASMs, or RBS-15 anti-ship missiles as additional options. Incidentally, the Gripen became the first fighter in the world to carry the devastating Meteor air-to-air -air missile, a BBR or Beyond Visual Range missile, that can track targets at a range of up to 128 kilometers. A Gripen E can carry up to seven of them. Meanwhile, the aircraft's standard armament comprises one 27mm BK-27 revolver internal automatic cannon and two AIM-9 sidewinders at the wingtip launchers. The Gripen was classified as a fourth-generation multi-role jet fighter with a compact and modern design that features a delta wing with a sweep of 45 degrees and a canard that contributes to generous lift at all speeds. Its cockpit is located ahead of amidships and behind the nose assembly and consists of a two-piece canopy that features excellent visibility and the standard-issue ejection seat. The pilot sits in a digital instruments panel that features multifunction displays with push-button mission package selection. In addition, the Gripen has HOTUS, or hands-on throttle and stick controls, to help the pilot fly the aircraft without removing his hands from the instrument panel, supported by a broad heads-up display located on the forward panel that presents data without the need to look away. All of these digital assets are directly and almost instantly updated through a real-time TIDLS, or Tactical Information Data Link System, allowing the pilot to keep instant contact and communication with other allied aircraft about their specific mission or targets. Also, its wings are low-mounted on a slab-sided tubular fuselage frame, and the search and tracking facility located under the nose allows for the multiple target acquisition and assessment feature, as well as the look-down, shoot-down capability. Although the design makes the Gripen somewhat unstable, fly-by-wire software stabilizes the aircraft and ensures smooth top-notch performance, while canards affixed to the sides of the intakes dramatically increase the agility and quickness of short takeoffs and landings and 70 and 80 degree attack angles. The future. In the past years, the JAS-39E Gripen variant has earned a reputation for being a pilot-friendly aircraft with its easy-to-understand interface and displays. Thus, Saab has managed to successfully market the Gripen as a true international aircraft, thanks to the backing of the Swedish government and numerous collaborations and partnerships. And although it has strong competitors such as the F-16 and the Typhoon, the Gripen has been exported to several countries such as Hungary, the Czech Republic, South Africa, Brazil, and Thailand. Other countries such as Bulgaria, Canada, Mexico, Argentina, Peru, and Uruguay are potential buyers, and with the latest Gripen E variant already out in the market, it looks like the best is yet to come. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the Saab JAS-39 Gripen. Is it a worthy opponent to the time-tested American F-16 Falcon or the Russian MiG-29? Stay tuned.